<sighs> you know, if there's one thing the internet needs, it's about 20 to 30 more hot takes on why the new Ghostbusters no one's seen is bad. Oh hey, what's this? Ah, oh, that's a Davis Arini video. I said I wouldn't do any more stuff about him because people who focus on the same thing over and over are really weird, you know? You know, I just realized I am really weird. Plus, I've been looking for an excuse to open the vodka. As they say in Russia, Nazdorovye, es Jews. That's right, when he's not busy diagnosing his former business partners with serial killer, or acting entitled to other old writers as they try to distance themselves from him, Davy Reaney has some deep analytical thoughts about a Ghostbusters film he hasn't seen! I wonder what amazing insights he'll bring to the table. Let's check it out, shall we? The problem with Ghostbusters 2016 is that the main cast is all female. Now am I saying that all You've gotta love the guy's honesty. <laughs> The reason Ghostbusters doesn't work with a female cast is because at the core, it is a male story. Yeah, only men can hunt for ghosts. I'm sure he's about to justify this. Now I'd like to step back for a moment. No, he just leaves it hanging. Okay. <laughs> Davis then goes into detail about how the term strong female character is a misnomer because women are less physically strong than men. Strength, physical strength, is one of the defining aspects of masculinity. When you contrast the sexes, there's no contest. Ignoring for a moment that the Ghostbusters' physical strength has never been one of their central characteristics, in fact they're mostly characterized as science nerds. I collect spores, molds, and fungus. The average man is stronger than 95% of women. This is why I find the phrase, strong female characters, so interesting. It sets women up to fail, competing in an arena where men are the superior sex. And as we all know, that's the only definition of strong there is. There's no alternative meanings. Dictionaries are part of the reptilian agenda to make people understand what words mean. Or, it requires that they be empowered by the director, who winds up giving superhuman abilities to 120 pound Scarlett Johansson. This results in cognitive dissonance for the audience. <laughs> That's right, cognitive dissonance. Davis has finally done it. After years of testing, he's finally found the most unbelievable, unrealistic member of the Avengers. The woman. And as we know, presenting women as strong and good at fighting is a recipe only for box office disaster. See? She's weak. So she, like all weak fools, has to compensate by using a gun. Someone who's strong is someone who's powerful. But strength isn't the only form of power. In Game of Thrones, neither Tyrion nor Varys are strong physically, and yet both of them are powerful and admirable despite physical weakness. Ah, I see. Davis finally recognizes that the term strong has multiple meanings. You can be strong without being physically strong. But w wait a second. If, if you don't have to be physically strong to be strong, wh why do you have to be male? Men are good at some things. Women are good at different things. What are women good at? Davis doesn't say here, but I think he addressed this in his Star Wars article. Women bleed on the birthing bed. This short documentary is pretty hilariously self-defeating, but it's not quite perfect because it's mostly still images interspersed with footage borrowed from someone else's music video. It's lacking what most of the rest of his videos have, namely a long, uncut shot of Davis gesticulating to the camera while pretending to sip his whiskey every time he thinks he's made a hot take or needs to stop to think of what he's gonna say next. Why is it a problem now? For someone who manages to never go 30 seconds without taking a sip, he doesn't seem to actually consume much of it. I've pointed this out before, but it's a truly amazing talent. You'd think you'd absorb some through osmosis if you touch it with your lips constantly for 20 minutes. But no, this is just how real manly men drink alcohol. By not drinking it. I'm a big boy now. And maybe I'm crossing a cultural boundary here, but who puts four or five huge pieces of ice in a nice whiskey like that? That completely removes the taste and the aroma. You might as well be drinking water. So let's return to Ghostbusters. The real Ghostbusters. Oh yeah! 
Oh man, I love the real Ghostbusters. It was my favorite show when I was growing up. I was born a year after it went off the air, but I've been nostalgic for other people's childhoods my whole life. Oh. No, he, he just made a very poor choice of words when describing the original Ghostbusters film. Oh, okay, fine. What's this movie really about? When you strip away all of the makeup, the setting, the ghosts, <laughs> the gags, and the big name <laughs> actors, if you ignore everything about the film, apart from the fact the main characters are male, then Ghostbusters is about being a man. Beat that, feminists! What is the kernel of narrative that you find? It's a movie about four friends putting together a small business and the difficulties they have to deal with. This is a masculine story at its core. He doesn't even say what made the original film good. He openly admits he's ignoring everything about the film except the physical sex of the principal characters, then makes a vague statement about the story being about four friends starting a business together. That isn't even accurate either. The film's about three friends starting a business, and Winston is a new recruit they hire later. So even his summary of the original film is wrong. But based on this reductive, misremembered plot outline, he then concludes that this premise simply could not work if they were women. Women don't start businesses. The reason it's a masculine story is because of the psychological inheritance we received from our ancestors. Men evolved to go out and prove themselves to women, to take big risks to bite off more than they can chew. Women evolved to find security in the home environment so that they could raise their children successfully. Oh, of course it's women about having children! That's what women are for, am I right, guys? So did the men. Because of this, our ancestors were the risk-taking men who would do something like gamble on ghost-busting being a successful business model. And we weren't evolved to be Ghostbusters, Davis! Ghosts do not exist! Income on Etsy, Etsy that what?! Never hit a bit. <laughs> Furthermore, <laughs> women were evolved for Etsy, and men were evolved to be Ghostbusters! Ghosts and magic nuclear proton packs I can suspend my disbelief about, but WOMS opening a ghost hunting business? Come on! Where do you study evolutionary biology, Davis? The university of your own mind? Roosh legalize rape v's internet forum? Now I'm sure that's my academic bias. You don't have to have a degree to know this stuff. I'm sure he cites his sources to support the idea that running a business is an evolutionarily male thing in the description. No, he doesn't. He just links to his Twitter. Gosh, he's so rational. He's a true free thinker. He's free from having to provide evidence or reasoning for his claims. Davis has always had a devil-may-care attitude to proving his point using evidence. In a previous video where he claims women are depressed because of feminism, he cites precisely one source, which links to a dead page, prompting you to have to Google it for him and eventually discovering it doesn't say what he says it says. So even when he does cite his sources, you have to go out of your way to find them just to realise he's making it up. Davis then goes on to diagnose Paul Feig, a successful and critically acclaimed millionaire film director who's done more than Davis ever will, with some kind of weird mother complex? It is clear that Feig is a man who's deeply confused about the sexes, though he never learned about masculinity from a father who was always working. He was a boy raised to be a woman. If you don't agree with me, you have a mental disorder. He claims that Feig is just projecting his beliefs onto the world. He takes his malformed, stunted understanding of masculinity and projects it onto the other sex. Wow, the man literally fantasizes about everyone not like him being completely crazy. And when he's not doing that, he's accusing them of projecting. In fact, he makes this kind of claim all the time with people he doesn't like. She's projecting, he's projecting, you're projecting. That's right, Davis. Everyone's projecting. They manufactured a problem to be upset with. He's just constantly finding problems to bitch about that only he can find the solution for. Estu really is a mental disorder, and you're a part of it. Remember when he kept comparing Jordan Owen to Elliot Roger just because they had a slight argument? By the way, it's not a good look to openly admit you work with people who even you think have the makings of a violent outburst. In another interview with Hollywood Reporter, he made a point of saying that his favorite color was purple. Oh, the color purple, am I right, guys? Clearly the man's deranged. Might as well lock him up right now. Davis loves to diagnose people with made-up problems in order to then prescribe his own ideal solution. Looking back through the article where he shills for testosterone cream the company Andro Plus gave him for free, 
Davis diagnoses the entire male sex in the modern day of having an epidemic of low testosterone, his main point of evidence being your own eyes, or rather, his personal opinion. The world is sick, and the cure is this topical cream I was given for free by my sponsors. <laughs> to be fair though, he does give recommendations for natural solutions to men's lack of testosterone. 1. Fix your diet. 3. Work out. 2. Supplements. 4. Lifestyle. 7. Proofread your fucking article! Hey, shilling for this testosterone cream stuff sounds like a nice racket. That's why I've decided to get in on that business. Are you living in constant fear of losing your one source of pride, your hashtag manliness? Worried you'll lose your sex partner to someone with a greater libido or who's nicer? Are you embarrassed by the male pattern boldness that combined with your shitty philosophy causes everyone to keep comparing you to Kane from Command and Conquer? Or are you just looking to get conned out of money by people who know how to play on your insecurities? Well new from Oxymoron Productions, it's Manastroni! It'll make you feel like the fictionalized version of man you think exists. Man spread some on your toast today! Or if you're trying to cut down on the unnecessary bread carb gluten tootens, just pour it directly into your gaping mouth hole, you decadent slut! Finally, manhood. Manastroni. It's not sponsored by Davis Arini. It can be yours for the extortionate price of $15,000 a month. In fact, at one point, Rather than quote the actual feminists he's trying to criticise, he quotes the villain of Ayn Rand's The Fountainhead and says, yeah, they're basically just like that. Taking this in consideration with his poor and reductive understanding of the re, I mean, original Ghostbusters, and his admission that he didn't actually watch most of Anita Sarkeesian's work when he made a documentary about her, something very clear unfolds. Davis is just making shit up. The reason he cites no sources except ones that contradict him and talks only in vague statements about every subject he's ever covered is because he doesn't actually engage with any of the material he's discussing at all. The only people he ever consistently cites or quotes in detail are people he already agrees with from his personal corner of the manosphere, and even then that list changes over time as more and more of them reject him. You might notice that Davis' overall style has altered a little, and I'm not just saying he's finally become ashamed of poor old MacArthur and hidden him. In previous videos and articles, Davis wouldn't censor himself. He would be quick to point out that women are the real cause of the world's problems and they need to be forced to submit. But now he's saying women are good at some things. He doesn't say what exactly besides having children, keeping a house clean and running an Etsy store. <laughs> But that's at least progress, he's no longer claiming their sole purpose is to bleed on the birthing bed. Which brings me to the question of the day. Has our good friend Davy Wavy actually improved as a person in the time since I last looked at his stuff? Or has he simply learned how to cloak his beliefs behind slightly more coded language? I'll let you decide. But it's the latter, and if you disagree, you're wrong. On some days, Davis will diagnose people he's never met with a whole heap of mental disorders from the safety and complacency of his literal armchair, and then on others, he'll tell you that psychiatrists just make problems up where none exist. <laughs> well, someone is. You know, 60 years ago, the people we now refer to as neo-reactionaries were the mainstream, the actionaries, saying that women really shouldn't be in any kind of working roles and pointing to the fact that there weren't any and asking, have you seen any women doing good jobs lately? But then women started working and proved that they were just as good slaves to the capitalist nightmare as men and that whole argument went out the window. Nowadays we call them neo-reactionaries and they mostly just make shitty documentaries barely anyone watches about the misandry in Bioshock or films they haven't seen yet. Occasionally they go out to their car or the woods to film themselves diagnosing far more successful men than them that they haven't met with mental disorders so they can feel better about how their ideas have failed them. I call that progress. I could tell you that I don't like Davis, that he's a bad guy and needs to be stopped, but the honest reality is I like him very much. He's hilarious, he's provided me with hours of amazing content that I can't stop watching. His petulant, incoherent whining and the air of mirth with which he's received, even by his own guys, and it is mostly guys, will never stop being funny to me. And Davis? Please never ever stop. Please continue writing free associative rants on your website for me to read and enjoy. 
and please don't go outside too much, because if you meet too many feminists who you can have a real conversation with, you might change your mind on some points, and then I would lose a source of comedy. That said, I know in my heart you will come around one day. We'll kill you with kindness, and your ghost will be a feminist. That wasn't a threat, that was a metaphor. Look, the people on your side might hate you for making them all look bad and question your masculinity through your constant need to stock up on testosterone cream. But you'll always be my man, Davis. Here's to you. Cheers. You'll notice I only use one piece of ice. Because I'm already cool enough. I'd like to say an extra special thanks, in no particular order except alphabetical, to Aaron Salisbury, Alexander Corbett, Alicia Parker Martell, Amanda Beverly, Axel Blaze, Beck McKenzie, Bob, Casey Schnabel, Kieran, David Rose, Gorkum Gaduk, and Instant Grat! For a donation of only two dollars, yes, you can see our text like this one. Shot. I'm awful at this.